All righty then. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this action-packed, non-stop, fun ride, fiasco, train wreck, kaleidoscope, adventure time. All right. So, I slight change of plan. What I propose to us, because this is not a democracy, but I like to pretend it is, just like real, just like real government. We, um, I'm going to talk to you for a half hour. Um, I'm going to do some. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of how BuddyPress is used in multiple industries. Um, these slides are going to be made available afterwards. You don't have to write your uh, write everything down. Um, this is some of the information I've presented before. Um, so if you've seen some of my talks, then some of this might be familiar. The, and then we're going to end at 11.30. And I propose at 11.30, we end early and beat everyone to lunch. Um, if my advice, and again, um, I'll, I'll give you directions. We have food vouchers for you. Um, my advice to you is that make sure I stop at 11.30. <laughs> and then we do have to take, do a little bit of a walk to a building, which I'll show you where that is. And my advice to you is grab the food and then bring it back here, because we only technically have about an hour for lunch. So you go there, get food, bring it back, and then I don't care if you eat while I talk after lunch. At least we'll all be here, and we'll beat all the other workshops. And the, and the other children that are also here. Excuse me, young teens. All right, so let me, let me boot this sucker up. Get the gerbil running here. Let's see. And we'll also talk about a little miscellaneous buddy press things along the way. OK, so. Before we go into some real world examples, let's talk about why you would want to use BuddyPress in the first place. And maybe as a developer, you're excited about BuddyPress, you know the advantages, but sometimes it's hard to communicate that to a client. Where they go, what's this BuddyPress stuff? Is it a software, it's a plugin? Okay, well, there's other plugins available where I can get this custom developed. And sometimes those solutions may work for them. But generally speaking, the advantages that I walk away with with BuddyPress for clients is, first of all, of course, it's open source, just like WordPress. And just like John mentioned earlier, it works with almost every well, like, good WordPress theme. I use the word good in there for a reason. Uh, my, I think if, if your BuddyPress isn't working with whatever WordPress theme you're using, I wouldn't use that WordPress theme. <laughs> it's probably not built. Uh, it's probably not all, doesn't have all its marbles. Um, you get to also control your own data. Um, Ning used to be big, but I think once that collapsed, or at least the free version of it collapsed, a lot of people started to realize. Yes, we have a question in the back. They're having a problem with my voice? Okay. Uh, can, David, can you uh, message Papasoft? in general, oh, they're okay. Can, can you look into that? It's the noise, background noise. And maybe we have to go knock on the door downstairs to, for, for Gideon, maybe. We'll bear with us here. They can put it on mute and I can just, you know, do a puppet show or something. I'm not sure yet. Remember I said this was a trial run? <laughs> yeah, all right, so anyway, customization. Obviously, using BuddyPress allows you to customize it to whatever you want, and we'll see those examples in a minute. And you know what? BuddyPress doesn't have to be the solution either for complete projects. Uh, people tend to forget that a little bit. But so I've done a numerous projects before where there are just people just, intranets are still things people want built. Intranets, right? Things that don't see the time of day publicly. What BuddyPress is great for those. And also proof of concepts. So you have someone approaching you who is a startup company. And either they are, they're basically looking for investors, many of them. So what they will do is they will use WordPress as a platform and BuddyPress to, as a proof of concept to show their investors, this is pretty much a minimal viable product. Please give us money or whatever they want to do with it. And sometimes I build projects, and that's as far as they've gotten. Basically, they take it, they take the money, and they go rewrite it or do whatever they want with it. Other times, they go forward with it, but it's good for proof of concepts. And of course, BuddyPress is obviously heavily supported. So now that we're familiar with BuddyPress, we're going we're to see how they're being used in six different industries. 
And um, some of these I'm going to go more quickly than others, but like I said, the slides are available online, and many of these sites are public. Some of them are a little bit more public than others, especially uh, mainly the educational sites. First of all, we're going to talk about government. Now, you don't hear a lot about WordPress and government sites, at least in the US. WordPress and government, um, there are some notable examples, but still working on that. And that's probably because WordPress's presence in the government also relies a lot on the internet. So it's the, it's the network that you don't see, but the government uses internally. The, one of the examples of this is the National Park Service. This one, and this was actually built by a company called Web Dev Studios. I'm not sure some of you may be familiar with Web Dev Studios. This is an internal social network just for the employees for the National Park Service. They use the standard BuddyPress features, you know, like activity streams and groups. And they use the BB press, oh yay, I got a mention today, for forums. And it also, they, have, they use this uh, group tag plugin. So they tag the groups so they can better archive and search for them. So I, in the slides, I've put the prominent plugin URL. So when you go back to the slides, you can, you can go find these plugins for yourself. The other example is GovLoop, and it's built by people called TenUp, still hiring. This is, a resource that, this is a resource that actually allows government employees to share best practices and career building opportunities. If you want to know what that is exactly, go look at the site. I, I, just, I just wrote that. Um, actually, here's, this is a good example of a BuddyPress site having over 100,000 members in its community section alone. Some of its groups, I think, are in the, at least the five digits uh, group memberships for BuddyPress groups. Uh, this is actually a more straightforward example of BuddyPress integration. So you, as you can see, it looks more like a default BuddyPress site than some of the other examples. So nonprofits, yeah, yay for nonprofits, right? And uh, this is a web. The, one of the nonprofits that I'm familiar with is a, found, a company called our nonprofit called Foundation of Excellence. It's fairly new, and it basically works with academically talented students from low-income families. So they basically, if these kids like have, when you go to college, you're supposed to tour a bunch of colleges and pick one, right? But if you are from a low-income family, you don't have that opportunity. So this non-for-profit gives them kids those opportunities. It also does steam camps, and you probably, you even will see some of those people helping out volunteering on Sunday for our kids', kids uh, activities. But basically, what they what we do for, what they do for the for their camps is that they create this BuddyPress network that's that's private, so it's it's publicly accessible. But obviously, you can't get into it unless you have uh, a secure username and password. And it allows the parents to see what their kids have done at the camps on that day. Um, that, you know, they can list achievements and their courses that they're completed, and they actually can upload some pictures. Some of the pictures are actually uploaded by the students themselves if they're old enough because they're actually taught WordPress or blogging skills in the camps. And this is just one way educational and non-for-profits can use BuddyPress, and um, especially, if, uh, especially if you have you know, kids involved and parents involved. Um, software as a service, I know I, I wasn't here, but John, maybe John talked about this. John uh, is involved with um, something called Flox, which is a, the first WordPress powered application to do like the full hosting, full featured social, for, let me start again, for full featured hosting social networks. So you don't have to build your own social network anymore. Now that Flox does it and they charge you for it, I think. Um, but here the point is that this is an example of, of a SaaS or software as a service using BuddyPress. And actually, if I, if I took Conferencia one day to like a paid model, like pay a couple of bucks a month and you'll get notified when these conferences have opened up their speaker calls, which is originally why I built it in the first place. You are like, oh, I missed a speaker call. Oh, I missed the tickets for this conference. Well, log in, activate, you know, join a, join a BuddyPress group and you'll get these automated emails for a buck a month or something. That's a software as a service, right? So. Really, BuddyPress can be used for those things as well. Community. So BuddyPress is accessible, and it has a low barrier to entry, um, at, least, at least for its um, basic functions. So it's been a choice for many community projects, local projects, that sort of thing. 
So people use BuddyPress to build social networks for neighborhoods. They use it for churches, religious reasons, youth groups, and um, even realtors use BuddyPress to set up uh, profiles for their realtors within their companies sometimes. So one of the examples of a community-based site is something called Study Church. Um, and I actually spoke with this gentleman before I kind of investigated it. And um, it's just basically a community site based on Bible study groups. And the memberships are actually hooked into Restrict Content Pro, which is a plugin that you, allows people to pay you money and you give them access to content in various areas on your website. So this particular website has a free membership and it also has a plan, I guess at the time I was talking to him, but by now he probably has this in place, a premium membership. So this is how this, he's getting a little bit of income to help with his site. So the website is basically a one big study collaboration aspect. So when you answer a question in these Bible study groups, the answer is saved as a comment. It's also a buddy press activity item so that the group can engage back and forth based upon the answer. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, it is truly what a social network it is. It's truly communication between other members in an open forum. So um, that's, I thought that was actually a pretty good example of a community-based site. This one's my favorite. I think yeah. every time, yeah, right, well, well, we know David. Uh, so, yeah, all right. Sorry, my brain's getting past all the jokes. Okay, now we're good. So I think every time I show examples of Buddy Press, I, I try to clean out the old stuff and bring in the new stuff, because that's, I mean, America. But the <laughs> kitchen, Tasty Kitchen, always stays in my slide deck. This site, I don't know how old this site is. It's one of the oldest ones, but it's also one of the maintained sites a Buddy Press there is. I mean, this site is not like, it's not like on autopilot or anything like that. This site still has active members on the site, I think on a week, if not on a weekly, but a daily basis. I see it's totally public. I actually suggest you create an account and, you know, and, 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 and experience how they have modified it. It, all, it uses BuddyPress for the users, of course, but the users have the ability to create recipes and, and share those recipes and, and, and catalog them. And actually, there's a, there's a post ratings plugin that they incorporate so people can actually rate other people's recipes. So this is why I don't add anything to the site. But it's actually, it, the content on it is so rich. And that's what, and that's what makes it so, so interesting and probably so popular is that they just took BuddyPress and just added a community aspect around just sharing recipes with each other. It's very well done. If I look at this anymore, I'm going to be hungry, but I suggest you check it out. So moving on from community sites, higher education. So BuddyPress has been growing in, high, in the higher education space for quite a while. And that's the same thing with WordPress as well. WordPress is, is popular in the higher education space as well. I think there's a conference coming up about that too, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, is she in the room? All right, moving on. It's, but anyway, but WordPress has become more popular in the higher education space, and so therefore BuddyPress has also kind of taken um, to it as well. And in fact, it's BuddyPress has probably become so popular, we could probably just have just a 30 minute talk just, to, just on how colleges and universities actually use BuddyPress. Um, by the way, that was my speaker application for the conference. That was it right there. So let's take a look at some few examples. Um, this one's probably the oldest slide on my deck, too. If you ever talk about higher education in BuddyPress, one of the biggest and oldest sites is an academic social network for the City University of New York. I don't know, C-U-N-Y abbreviated, system. Jeez, uh, this Boone, Boone started this like how long ago? It's forever. Boone, if you can hear me, give me a sign through live stream. By the way, how the live stream's coming along? Still cracking? All right, crack a lacking. Okay. So basically, developers, this site is, I, 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 this is so old, I almost forget how it started. I would love to have Boone explain it in detail. But the developers not only created this site for the education with BuddyPress, but they've created, it became so popular, they basically like invented 
plugins and, and functionality that have been either incorporated into BuddyPress or has always been kind of developed along a parallel in BuddyPress for a long time. This actually, the site actually supports a number of huge, large networks. And there is, like I said, I think the plugin that came out of that is something called Common, Commons in a Box. So if you're more interested in that, Google that, Commons in a Box, I think. Oh, and I also have the URL up there that is just dedicated to that type of app, BuddyPress application. Um, this is like the premier example when you're talking about educational uh, BuddyPress sites. Another, another example, so, let's talk about there is something at the Michigan Tech School called ParentNet. Now this isn't for the students, name and, as the name implies, it's for the parents. So the parents went ahead and created a network, and we're talking hundreds of parents here. They created their own network for their children at Michigan Tech. So they, parents can swap information, they can discuss concerns. I put that in quotes, not really sure when I wrote that, but whatever concerns are, they can discuss them and they can get some questions answered. So basically, it's a parent support group for their college kids, which I thought was actually pretty neat. Me, on the other hand, I wouldn't notice them gone. All right, so moving on. Temple University School of Business. Now, some of you, make, um, um, this is actually a college out of Philadelphia. It's a multi-site network that allows over a 1,000 members not only teach and take courses, so basically this means they write blogs, and these students can also learn and engage with each other with BuddyPress as well. So they've got the blog functionality mixed in with the BuddyPress. And, and they also do this, they also send out um, specific uh, news, I'm not gonna use the phrasing correctly, news alerts or knowledge alerts through RSS feeds. So people can subscribe to these RSS feeds and, and get the knowledge that way. Very, very tech good tech-worthy school for still using RSS feeds and knowing what RSS feeds are, anyway. Uh, Dawson College, it's a community of teachers using BuddyPress, but what's cool is that they use a plugin called BuddyPress Groups Documents. Anybody ever heard of BuddyPress Groups Documents? Good! So you know I'm not making this up. So people can upload and share documents with other people inside the BuddyPress groups that they're members of. So it's only available within those groups. And that's really nice because when you have group sharing documents, it doesn't clutter up the rest of the website, right? So these, you, know, you have one particular department sharing documents that they don't have to go to a separate documents page and you just go right to the BuddyPress group. And so if you're sharing documents with BuddyPress, I suggest you look at that plugin because that could be a nice way to, for your website projects. And then finally, we have a, a, a website, John Carroll University, uses WordPress and BuddyPress to connect students with alumni and the alumni enter their information into a gravity form. Anybody know, grab, ever heard of gravity forms? Okay, I'll just assume that was yes. That populates a mentor, and you basically, there are custom post types called mentors, and then that populates that, and then there's a few custom taxonomies mixed in there. But anyway, BuddyPress allows students to log in, and browse these mentors, and then be able to connect with them, share stories with them, and so forth. So, uh, most of these education sites you can access publicly, and maybe one or two may require some like permission or special access, so I suggest you check them out. Now, we've already, the, the conferences and events, we kind of already talked about this. This are just some random screenshots, as you'll see when you look at the slides. We've already kind of looked at this, but again, I, I can at least share with you some of the plugins that I did use for the conference CSI, Gravity Forms, BuddyPress Followers, BuddyPress Followers is a plugin when you, when you, the standard BuddyPress like friendship model is closer to, oh God, I'm gonna say the F word. Closer to Facebook, uh, where you have to, hey, I wanna be your friend. And you, that friendship has to be accepted. And then your friendship, you're both friends, right? That's the way it goes. You just can't, you know, you can't be a friend without the other person accepting the invite. BuddyPress Followers is a plugin where it's kind of more like Twitter. You know, it's like that angry ex stalking you from the back. It's basically they follow you and you don't have to reciprocate. So I use that system. And it's actually, pretty, it's, it's actually a pretty good plugin because a lot of the BuddyPress sites that I use, it's, you don't have to have the other person respond to you. Now that comes in handy. You can use both plugins at the same time. You can follow somebody, have someone follow you just like, like on Twitter. But you can also use the default BuddyPress friendship model when you want to, let's say you want to establish a deeper connection like you want to direct message somebody 
but you don't want people start direct messaging you if you're not following them back, right? It's kind of like, you know, weird. So anyway, and then finally, the front end registration and login forms. Whew, that's a breather. But that's, uh, this is a plugin that used to be Pippin's plugin, and now, I'm just taking over it. Drawing a blank. Anyway, this is actually a plugin that takes your front end registration and login forms and puts them on the front of your site. So you can create basically custom login pages, custom registration pages. The gravity forms that I use, and here's a trick for you, a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, but there is a, there is a, pers uh, I'm gonna say persistent problem. It's not, it's not an ep epidemic, but it does happen often enough that people do ask once in a while about body press registration spam. It's always a constant battle, and there's actually probably good plugins for it, and there's probably good techniques that I'm not um, aware of and other people in the audience probably know, but my personal technique is that for a lot of my body press projects, I use gravity forms. Um, again, this is not always applicable to all projects. You do sometimes need that body press registration form, um, but I basically, in user gravity forms has a user registration plugin. So you can create a form that people can enter, and when they hit enter, their information gets sent to WordPress to create a user and also gets sent to the BuddyPress metadata fields. What does this mean? It means you can replace the WordPress or the BuddyPress registration form. What does that mean? I have not gotten a single spam registration from a Gravity Form website that I've built. Zero. Of course, maybe I don't design things popular enough, but I'm pretty guaranteed that Gravity Forms filters, there's something with Gravity Forms and you can also add on to Gravity Forms. Um, it's just basically a different, you know, the, the bots look for buddy press registration forms, so it's probably the most of it. But anyway, that's, whenever somebody says, I have buddy press spam, the, the, the quickest thing I can tell them is get a copy of Gravity Forms, replace your registration page, and see what happens. But anyway, I'm, again, that's just one of probably many different examples. Um, so, the best buddy press, this is, this is something that I've, I've had a whole deal. The best buddy press sites are the ones you can't tell buddy press was used on. Those, those are the, but of course, those are the ones that take probably the longest time to do. All the examples I've showed you today took a good amount of time and effort from their creators. And it pays off because unless you're a developer, you wouldn't know that it was powered by buddy press. And buddy press, you know, the more you get away from the default buddy press look and feel, the more your client's gonna think this is like a really kick-ass website and it doesn't look like anybody else. Um, same thing with Twitter Bootstrap, right? You, you know, everybody's, you know, there's pros and cons to using it, but the biggest con in my book is that all the, all the Twitter Bootstrap sites look the same, or at least a lot of them do. And then when you show someone a great site that says, oh, how'd you do it? And they find out the Bootstrap, that's, that's, that's actually a pretty good thing. Same thing with BuddyPress a little bit. Um, so, when people ask me how, what to consider, how, things to consider for using BuddyPress, first, it's important to spec out the features first. That sounds like a no-brainer, but immediately a lot of clients come up to me and say, I want to use BuddyPress, let's start looking for themes and plugins and stuff like that. No, first you spec it out, you see if the themes and plugins work, and then what you do is that, in my second point, is that do a default WordPress install so I do a lot of this for complicated sites for clients. I don't dive into this. In, I don't dive into development immediately for the site, especially if the user does not is not familiar with BuddyPress. I give a word, default WordPress installation, put it to 20. What's my favorite? 2013. I can't remember. 2013, something like that. Actually, probably older. It's probably 2011. And that's uh, and I put BuddyPress on it. I just let the client play for a while. After lunch, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to show you a BuddyPress site that all of you, after lunch, will be able to register and log into, and we're going to go through each of the BuddyPress features together. That's what we're going to do after lunch. Uh, did I say after lunch? I meant after lunch. Allow for more. So anyway, here's finally some things to consider. With basic customization, again, remember BuddyPress should work with all WordPress themes. Now. As a developer, you're at some various level of development, right? You're either like you've just gotten into development, you feel you're a novice, or you feel pretty sure about yourself. Um, I won't, I mean, I won't lie. I mean, obviously, in my opinion, advanced customization is going to require 
good development skills or from for the agencies. So I'll, some people get frustrated with BuddyPress, and it's more of their problem, honestly, because they're you know they assume they can they can assume that oh it's BuddyPress, I'll just make it look like this you know like I'll make it just look like a Kickstarter, no problem, right? And then they you know they dive into the pool a little too quickly. So just realize that. BuddyPress is great, it's awesome, but just like a lot of good tools, it does take time to master and learn. Um, and a lot of people forget about the design in the, in the UX part of it too. Um, you can't just whip off a BuddyPress site as a developer without some, and especially the more complex it gets, the more you're going to need really good design and UX skills. And a lot of developers don't have that, really, or at least, at least the majority of them, I think. I think developers are mostly stuck with developing the code. So a lot of the projects I do, I actually bring on a designer. <laughs> and again, we don't actually, we don't, we do the design and the concepts before we build anything. Maybe the proof of concept first, maybe. But the design in UX is just as important as the code that you write. There's certain things about social websites, certain things that you should or should not do, make it easy for the users to discover other users, to message other users. All of this is important. It's not relying on the code as much as the design and the user experience. And then finally, I'm sure this is probably happening now, I, although at the time I wrote this, it was probably future tense. Start adding SSL for your secure login pages. In fact, let's, let's just scratch that. Let me reword that. Start adding SSL to your sites, period. Very, it's, it's going to happen. It is already starting to happen. Google is going to eventually not count your site. It, 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 we're, I don't know if it's gonna count it as a security problem or just not gonna rank it high enough in the search listings. But Firefox is starting to mark login forms that are just an HTTP as insecure. Not the website, but login forms, your login page. So we're talking about our login page specifically. If it's not SSL secured, Firefox is already starting to market as insecure. I don't know if that's happened now or if it's still in the nightly builds, but it doesn't matter. The point is that if you're building a website that has a login form, you're gonna want to at least secure that page. But in my opinion, just secure the whole goddamn website. So anyway, that's it. That's, we're done. Um,